Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm going to do something I've never done before. Um, I don't often do reaction videos, but I thought it would be fun, since we just passed the five-year milestone, to do a reaction to my first video. Not my first review, but the first video I uploaded to this channel, which was not a review. Um, it hasn't been seen very many times, not a lot of views on this, but this is what I originally thought that I would do with this channel. Um, obviously, I, I had a YouTube channel before, so it's not my first video ever, but it is absolutely my first ever G.I. Joe related video and the first video on this channel. Uh, uploaded um, April 16th, 2014. So, um, this is basically a uh, part of like a little mini movie that I was trying to make uh, using the G.I. Joe action figures as the actors. Um, it's not exactly stop motion. I think the kind of animation this is is called uh, chuck -a motion Not exactly stop motion, but it was something that I thought would be fun. And I had like a whole story planned out in my head. Um, and this was supposed to be the first part of it. It was going to be my own version of G.I. Joe, uh, with my own origin of G.I. Joe and my own origin of Cobra. Basically, starting at the beginning, it would draw some influence from the Larry Hama version of the comic book, uh, but it would also take a few elements from the cartoon series, but, but with an entirely different story that I just made up myself um, and this was supposed to be the beginning of it. I never got past part one, okay? There is no part two. I never made a part two, and I think you'll see why. For this, I built a bunch of sets. Uh, I had, like, props and everything that I made for the action figures so that they could have a world to walk around in. I put a lot of effort into it. They're all pretty bad. Uh, it may not look like a lot of effort went into this, but for me at the time, it was a lot of effort. It, it was so much effort, and in fact, it took. It was so time-consuming to produce, I decided that, you know, I was going to put this on hiatus, right? And for the next video, I decided to try a review, which was Breaker, my first review. So the second video on the channel was my first review, a review of Breaker. Uh, I want to show you this. I'm, I'm going to just hit play, and I'm just going to react to it as we go. Uh, I'll make sure to put it up on your screen here so uh, you can watch along. But um, it, it's, it's rough. I've, I've seen it. I made it. It's, it's pretty rough. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this reaction to it. So uh, let's have a reaction to my first ever video. And let's go ahead and hit play and go. And we have a disclaimer right off the bat. Um, I was always worried about copyright infringement even back then. Um, even though IDW wouldn't have been a copyright holder, they would have been a, um, a licensee, but still didn't want to step on anyone's toes. Uh, there we go. G.I. Joe Age of Terror. That was going to be the the uh, name for the thing. Uh, and part one, the cobra hatches. Because cobras hatch from eggs. Snakes hatch from eggs. And this is Cobra Commander. In the early days of Cobra. Giving an impassioned speech. Now, I didn't have enough action figures to use as the crowd so obviously I've just used the backs of the heads of some Joe action figures I didn't have enough extra action figures to make a crowd out of them that's what I had to do I only had a handful of figures at the time power and order Yeah. Um, basically what I did is I kind of integrated several different types of populist rhetoric. I, I always assumed this is how uh, an organization like Cobra would have gotten started. Um, and at that time, um, I was doing a lot of reading about terrorism um, and counterterrorism. Um, 
I, I drew a lot of the ideology of Cobra Commander from some of the works from, uh, from uh, I think, Paul Berman. Um, and, and some other writers on terrorism. And I wanted to have uh, an explanation of kind of the symbolism of the mask and the patch. And there's this guy, he's a new recruit, but we have this dramatic moment looking into his eyes where he has the mask on and now he, his identity doesn't matter anymore, he is Cobra. Two years later, okay, let's see what Cobra Commander has done in two years. Uh, stock photo. He's he's managed to produce a stock photo, uh, one of which I put a sign that says "Welcome to Springfield." And here you go. This Arbco Industries that I made out of a box. And there's Major Blood. See, my thought was <clears throat> at the beginning of Cobra, as he's amassing an army. He's promising these people, that he's promising glory, he's promising, you know, world domination, but it takes a lot of time to build an organization that's ready for that. So I thought, like, this is why he would bring in Major Blood. He would bring in Major Blood because he needs somebody with military experience to kind of guide these troops and they're all inexperienced troops at this point they're they're recruited but they don't have like actual combat experience so he brings in major blood to kind of give a little bit of backbone to his army mystery pilot i didn't have enough cobra troop action figures either Cobra Commander only appears in the hood here because I don't think I had any other Cobra Commander figure at the time. So I had I had the thing on um, on fishing wire. At the time, I wanted to do this without showing any like human hands manipulating the figures. So I did things like I used fishing wire and everything to keep me out of the shot. Although there is one shot where you can see my hand, but it's on purpose. Um, but now, looking back on it, I don't think that was necessarily a great idea because if I had not bothered with the, the fishing line, I could have like had the blades spinning. And I apologize for the very bad Scottish accent I gave Destro here. Oh, and I apologize to everyone in Australia for my uh, major blood impression. Sorry about that. There is one thing that I still think is a nice touch. I put electrical tape around Destro's wrists because he's supposed to be unarmed here, right? He comes in peace. And, and so I covered up, I didn't want him to have wrist rockets, right? Because then he would be armed. So this is him without the wrist rockets. I, I basically taped over them with, uh, with electrical tape. You seem to know something about Cobra. You should know then that you have taken a great risk by coming here. We must protect us. Destro has sought out Cobra. Cobra didn't seek him. He found Cobra. I like the shadow. I, I, some of this is not bad. You know, lit with a flashlight, but I kind of dig the shadows. It's not all terrible, but a lot of it's terrible. Bring the Baroness. So and then we have the interior, and it's... I Look, it took hours to put this together, and, like, the chair isn't even straight. You know... It's the best I could do at the time. Uninvited and you hide behind a mask. Why should I trust you? I could say the same of you. 
I believe we both wear masks for the same reason. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. Have you noticed there's no action of any kind so far? If you were hoping to use Cobra to spread your influence, you have made a mistake. Here, I am the commander. For, for this first video, though, what I wanted to do is I wanted to establish everyone's motivation. I wanted to kind of get inside the head of Cobra Commander and Destro and Major Blood and understand you know what they all want and why they would all come together. By the way, my daughter did the voice of the Baroness on here. She was very reluctant to do it. I think I had to bribe her to do it. So she seems to know a lot about Destro. She is the Cobra intelligence officer. Now obviously she knows Destro, but she doesn't want to let on to Cobra Commander that she knows Destro. A lot of talking. I got that Cobra Trooper with his gun, his uh, uh, rifle up like that. It's broken. I didn't have one that wasn't broken. I hadn't been collecting all that long at this point. I, I did not have enough action figures to do this, but I did it anyway. So, this, it's a lot of talking. If, if I were to do this today, I would definitely try to add a bit more punch and like maybe start with some action and then roll into the, um, the, the exposition. There, there, there's my hand. Okay, that was the only time you see my hand in this, but I thought it would be cool to have a close-up of Destro placing the blueprints on the table. And of course, it's the blueprints for the His Tank and the Fang. So basically, Destro is trying to sell the His Tank and the Fang helicopter to Cobra. Ha 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 ha. Yes, and he wants to join Cobra too. That, I think that would be a big ask for Cobra Commander, who's been demanding complete loyalty from all his troops. Uh, and here comes this guy that he's never known before, and his loyalty is questionable at best. So. It is true. Once Destro is hired, as long as he is paid, he is absolutely loyal. Little nod of the head from Destro. Man, this is this is a lot of talking. You have quite a reputation yourself. Yeah, a little little, little backhanded compliment, little uh, little dig at uh, Major Blood. I have confidence in my professionalism. I can accept your terms. Very well, Destro. There you go. Handshake and Destro has joined Cobra and has made Cobra more dangerous because he's going to supply uh, tanks and helicopters. To be continued, actually it was never continued. And, and the credits, Age of Terror Part 1, by me, music by other people. See, even back then I was trying to make sure to uh, attribute uh, things to the proper people. Um, I, w I was Worried about copyright back then, so I didn't want to have any copyright infringement. So watch for tar part. Watch for part two, the origin of GI Joe. That was going to be part two, was the origin of GI Joe, and that's it. That's it. That's the whole thing. So there you have it. That was my first video and uh, my reaction to it. It is pretty bad. Um, you can kind of see like what I was going for. You can kind of see the idea that I had, but the execution uh, was certainly not what it should have been. Um, I actually did work on part two. I did some work on part two because part two is supposed to be the origin of G.I. Joe. Now that we've got some background on Cobra, um, I was going to have uh, a scene where 
General Flagg and General Hawk uh, go to the White House to propose um, this idea for this uh, this team of you know fa a fast response team uh, for uh, anti-terrorism uh, that would draw from all of the branches of service, but they'd all be under one roof. They'd be a super secret team, um, and they'd need a super secret base. Um, so there was going to be um, a uh, you know I was going to use the pit like just like in the comic book, but I was going to make the pit. It was going to be an abandoned base from a previous team. There's going to be a previous team called Adventure Team that had used this as a secret base, this uh, this underground base at Fort Wadsworth, um, but that team was discontinued, so this new team that was going to be called G.I. Joe uh, would take over that base and kind of remodel it and make it into the pit. Um, so um, that was the next scene. It would, The scene was going to be uh, basically in the White House while they're making this pitch uh, and getting approval to form the G.I. Joe team. So, and I, I made a, uh, a, a set, like a little miniature set, for the Oval Office. Um, you know, I, it, I think it was actually impressively detailed, but um, I, I tried to uh, film a little bit of it. I, I shot a few of the, uh, the shots that I would need for it. But when I went back and looked at it um, to try to see what I could piece together and edit together, none of it turned out good. I mean, it was, it was all basically unusable. Nothing really turned out well at all. That was kind of the end of the project. I was like, okay, I, if I continued this, I'd have to reshoot everything to even make it usable. Um, my flimsy little set for uh, the Oval Office would have to be fixed because it had, um, it wasn't very sturdy and it didn't hold up very well. So, um, yeah, it, uh, it, that's when I, I finally kind of gave up on it. I was doing reviews kind of regularly and the reviews were a little more fun um, and people were watching them. So I kind of just gravitated toward the reviews and I have done some of these kind of chuckamation action scenes, um, uh, so I, I didn't completely abandon uh, this kind of idea, but I did abandon the, the story that I had, uh, because honestly, all of part one is just talking, just people talking, and all of part two would have going to be just people talking, and it would take in uh, really too long before we actually got to any of the adventures, any of the action. You know, it, it needed a little more work. Uh, it just, it wasn't quite what I was hoping that it would be. So that's my reaction to it. I don't think it's very good. There are still some things that I like about it, but some of the choices that I made I think could have been better. Um, and um, yeah, and I apologize for the terrible Australian accent and the terrible Scottish accent. Um, I'll never do it again, I promise, I promise. Uh, I, I don't recommend going back and watching the original video. It's not very good. You've just seen it here. It doesn't get any better uh, watching it on the whole screen. Um, but yeah, that was the beginning of the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 YouTube channel. Um, and I don't regret it. Uh, made a lot of mistakes back then, but I can't regret those mistakes because it got me here um, and able to um, talk with all of you guys and get to know a lot of you guys. Thanks for watching this and don't forget um, I'll be taking this weekend off. No new review this weekend but I am working on other stuff. I am I'm, I'm still working um, because there's a lot of cool stuff coming up so I'll see you soon and uh, remember you know you know what you're supposed to remember. We'll see you later.